Hi, this is Elias Kineser, and the following demonstration is from my Citrix Zen Desktop 5 training course. Now, one of the most important questions that you guys are probably asking is, well, how do I update a virtual disk, Eli? I mean, you've been talking and showing us all these things, but I need to update it. What do I do? I mean, is it a manual process? How do I automatically update it? How do I do incremental updates? Show me something cool. So this is one of the coolest things that we're going to talk about right now. So how do you introduce updates to the vDisk cleanly in an automated manner, either completely new vDisk or incrementals if you have branch offices. So incremental updates are very, very well if you're trying to update a provisioning server, for example, that is in a branch office and you don't want to have to copy the entire vDisk down to that provisioning server in a different location. You just send the incremental files, which are typically smaller in size and can be transferred quicker and easier. So how do you create an update? So the first thing you do is you do what we just did. So you make a copy of the VDisk that you want to work with. So in our case, if we go back here, you'll make a copy of Windows 7. We made a copy of Windows 7 and we called it V2. This is the exact same copy at this point. You add it to the console. Once you've added it to the console, what we're going to do is you can come into virtual here. And remember we selected VDI01 as our master target device so that every time we want to make any changes, we make them through VDI01. So you can right click on VDI01. We're going to go to properties. We're going to select VDisks. So right now, it's still pointing to Windows 7. So if you remove it and click on Add, you can add V2, click OK, and click OK again. Now you can go back into the VDisk pool here, add V2 into private image mode so that you can make changes, so that all the changes you make stick. Flip that to private image mode, click OK, and click OK. So what happens now is that you can power on VDI01. It's going to stream Windows 7 V2 in private image mode. You can make all the changes you want to to that image, add applications. You can change the background if you want to, customize it the way you want. And once you're ready, shut down the master target device, come back into Windows 7 V2 here, right click, properties again. We're going to go into edit. I'm going to select mode and we're going to put it back to standard image mode and we're going to enable automatic updates for this vDisk. Now there are two options of selecting the automatic updates. You can apply the vDisk updates automatically as soon as they are detected by the server or you can schedule them. So if you want to make these updates and you're configuring everything but you don't want them to automatically take into effect, you can select when they can take into effect. So you can choose the date here, so on and so forth. You select the second option. Now, you're going to need to go to the Identification tab once you've made the changes, and we need to modify the version number. So now we're starting to talk about versioning. So you have three values in the version number. You have a major, you have a minor, and you have a build. Major is when you're going from a VDisk that you know has a lot of changes. You just want to, you're, you're doing a major change to it. You could increment this by you go to two, for example. A minor change could be incremented by zero, and this is just another build of the same VDisk. So it's the same VDisk, just another build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select two. So what happens is when provisioning server goes to check for an update on the VDisk, it's first going to start with the major update. If the major update has been incremented, it's going to use that disk, then it's going to check the, the minor, and then it's going to check the build. So if there's any increments here, if there's any number that's higher, it's going to use that. So I've made my changes here. You can you know feel free to fill in all the other values if you so choose to do. And we're going to go back to where it says general here. And in the class field, I'm going to add the number one. So what is the class field and why is it important to select it? Think of the class field as the, the field that is going to be common. It's going to be the single common denominator between all the parties involved. And the parties involved are the target devices, the old vDisk, and the new vDisk. So provisioning server has to be able to know that, hey, I'm comparing Windows 7 and Windows 7 v2. And the common denominator between these two is the class field here. So it has to check the class field and say, okay, these two have the same class field, so I'm going to compare them and use the one with the newer version. Once 
it detects the class field here and then it moves on to the identification and figures out which one is the newest one so that it can apply it to the target devices in the same context so if we click on OK now that we're done with this and click on OK again let's go into Windows 7 real quick here so I can show you what we're trying to do click on mode we want to put this into enable automatic updates we're gonna leave this at the default identification this is set to 1 so a v version 2 is now higher and version 2 is going to take effect so we're gonna click OK here and click OK again however let's go into our target devices let's take VDIO2 and go to properties you'll notice that the class here is blank so if the class is blank, the target device is going to ignore the VDisk changes. It's not going to apply the new v, the version of the VDisk to this target device because the class isn't the same. So by selecting the class, you are now telling it that it needs to participate in the new VDisk update. So if I select one here, now the common denominator between the VDisk and all the target devices is that number one based off of the class value. So I'm going to select OK. And I'm going to keep VDIO2 as the only one with the class one. Let's take a look at VDIO3 and see what it's set to. That's set to nothing. We're going to leave this. Let's take a look at its VDisk. Let's assign it VDisk Windows 7 since we removed it in the earlier task. Click OK. Let's double check that VDIO2 also has a VDisk. It doesn't. Let's give it Windows 7. And click on OK. So right now, VDIO2 and VDIO3 are both assigned Windows 7 as the virtual disk that they need to stream. However, VDIO2 has a differentiator, and that differentiator is that it has its class field populated with a number one, which correlates to the VDisk's class field, also with number one, which automatically is going to participate in the Windows update or in the VDisk updates. So we're going to click on OK. Okay, so now we've made changes to the VDisk, we've changed the background, we've added applications, we've done everything that we need to do. We want these changes to take effect immediately, we have the option is selected. We need to go to the Servers tab, and in order for the changes we made to take effect, we have to restart the stream service. In order to restart the stream service, you're going to right-click on PVSO1, and you're going to drag down here to where it says Stream Service, click on Restart, and Restart Services. Okay, success. I'm going to click on close. Now what we need to do, if we want to immediately have PVS check for the updates, right click on PVS again, drag down to where it says check for updates and we're checking for automatic updates. We're not talking about incremental just yet. I'm going to click on check automatic update. Yes. So you're forcing it to check immediately. Now, in order for this change to take effect on the virtual machines here we have to power them on so that they can check with provisioning server to figure out which disk they're supposed to stream because right now you'll notice that they are down the stat the state is down so once I power it on it's going to check and automatically change this from Windows 7 to Windows 7 v2 so let's go ahead and try that Alright, I've powered on VDIO2. Now let's go into the properties here and go to VDisks and voila. It's just like magic, right? It automatically updated the field here to V2. Now, if you notice on VDIO3, if I double click on it, go to VDisks, it still has the old Windows 7 selected. <laughs> now most of you are probably saying, hey Eli, it still says down here. So I have actually powered on this VM and the reason it says down is that it's probably still streaming in the background and the operating system hasn't completely come up. So for that matter, it'll continue to show this as down. But let me switch over to that virtual machine and show you that it's actually powered on. All right. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.